Where is it? Where is it?
okay, how are we going to do that? So, yeah. the thought was, we've got to give us some slides, and these get down to the Yeah. Um, Okay, I'm going to have a link for you shortly. Just to. Mm -hmm. So it's just done like a roundup, and everyone's like stressing to get stuff done. So I don't know if it's going to be If not, um, there's going to be a report. I'm going to record the whole thing. Check. Test. One, two. Where's Phantom Bar? Oh. Check. Test. One, two. Hello. That's high. Hello. 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 Check. Test. Check. Test. One, two. Be sure to sign up for my newsletter at the end of this video. Be sure to like us on Facebook. Be sure to retweet this post. Be sure to do something so that I can keep sending you awesome content that helps you out so that one day you'll be on a customer. Check test one, two, double check. Test level check one two. Check. Check check check. Oh, thank you. I can't attend your workshop, but I can give you some. Cool. Check test one two. Check test level check. Are you able to watch that link on YouTube right away? I sent a link that can be sent to all the cool people. Awesome. It's not what? Uh, it's just moving around in my video. Oh. 
Oh, there's a bit of a delay. That's why. Hello, check, check, check. Check, check, check. Check, 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 mic check. And if you'd like to learn more. And if you'd like to learn more. OK, now we're getting somewhere. Cool. Okay, better. <laughs> okay, cool.
Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And if there's any sort of technical difficulties or lag, there's, there's going to be a recording. By the way, are they going to be drilling? During? Oh, well. Make sure I'm still rolling. Yes, I am. And we don't have a bunch of drop frames. That's good. That's very good. Hmm. Okay. Uh, how is everyone doing this fine day? Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me in the back? Cool, cool. I'm wearing a microphone, but it's most mostly for the uh, recording. Okay, cool. So today we're going to learn about how to make video for your business when you've never done that before and you have no idea what you're doing. You've probably spent, if you've ever gone on YouTube for even a second, you've seen all these, a little slow, all these awesome businesses making all kinds of cool video for their business. And you want to get on, in on that action too. So, it, because it's a great way to connect with your audience on a human level, in a way that perhaps you could not with text alone. Uh, speaking of text, writing blog posts can take a long time and be tedious. Wouldn't it be simpler if you could just have a camera up next to you and be like, oh, hey, how's everyone doing today? <laughs> I'm making a video for you. So you hopped onto Google and um, did some searching and thereby entering the rabbit hole. And the first thing you may have discovered is that getting into this can be very, very expensive. And once you have the tools, learning to use them can take a very long time. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what all these buttons do on this camera. F-stop and shutter speed and all that crap. And then you fire up some editing software and here's a big list of file names. I don't know what those numbers mean. And here's something about subspace warp. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what all these, all these tools and I don't know why there are two windows. So, it can be quite confusing. Finally, in desperation, you may hop online to some sort of video community and say, is it supposed to be this hard or is, am I an idiot? And everyone says, yeah, it's supposed to be hard. It takes a long time. Buckle up. So, you know, if you're getting into video as a hobby or it's the kind of thing where you want to spend years learning to get good at it, that's one thing, but you know, when you have your own little baby business, time is somewhat of a luxury. So is it back to writing blog posts forever? Or is there any way that perhaps you could be like all the cool people who are making awesome video online, preferably without spending, without spending heaps of time learning the tools and all the little details and being a geek about all those things? and without spending a bajillion dollars. Maybe we can get something, I don't know, a bit more on this budget. And by the way, there's an extra coin I have with me. Maybe we can get something, I don't know, somewhere between $100 and $200. Let's see if we can pull that off. So when getting started with video, when you're just starting out, there are two very economical and very simple ways to get started. Um, and it depends on the kind of, sort of the kind of video you want to make and the kind of business you have. One of them is the mobile workflow, where you use a smartphone to record your video, to edit your video, to produce your video, all on your phone. And you can also do some, you can also go with a desktop-based workflow, which can be done with something as simple as this cheap little webcam here. And there's a bunch of editing software online that's pretty simple. And I'm going to go over a few of those. Why would you choose one over the other? Let's start with mobile. The advantage of mobile is that it can go anywhere. You don't need to be tied to your computer desktop. That can be useful, for instance, if you're an audiovisual installer 
and you need to make training videos to show your customers how they can use their installations after you go away. Or, for instance, if you do some sort of outdoor extreme video thing. Oh, sweet. Actually, I'm not a USB port, so I can, unfortunately I can't use it. And you want to do crazy things out, you know, tramping in the mountains. Being able to do it on your phone means you have a lot of freedom that you wouldn't be able to do shooting on, for instance, a webcam at your desk. So the key ingredient that makes this possible and looks somewhat professional and stable is this little thing. This is a smartphone to tripod adapter. Just strap it over your phone like this and attach this to either a tripod or a light stand or something like this. And you can be rid of that shaky handheld video and actually have something that is nice and stable. And there it is. Um, you can do things like this. And by the way, if you don't feel like buying one of those things, you know, there are alternative ways, but I don't necessarily recommend them. Um, here in Christchurch, there is a store only two blocks away called Photo Warehouse. As you can see, Biz Dojo is over on the left. Photo Warehouse is over on Fitzgerald Avenue. And for those watching in Auckland and or Wellington, there is a photo warehouse there as well. There is an awesome app called Adobe Premiere Clip that you can use to take all the video you recorded and put it into a neat little final video. You can do the whole thing on your phone. And the cool thing is, this app is completely free. I don't know how they make money on this app, but it's cool because, you know, it's free. And I'm not going to get too much into the, in into the intricate details of how to edit now, but I am going to have some cool bonus materials if you go to fixingyourvideo.com slash bizdojo. I'm going to put up some awesome tutorials that will teach you how to start out editing on your mobile device. Do videos yes. Oh, there's one coming. So let's say you don't really need to take your video production anywhere. Uh, most of what you do is just done at your desk. In that case, the desktop workflow might just be for you. The big advantage of the desktop workflow is that you can keep it set up because after a while of making video, you're eventually going to encounter this little bit of resistance, which is, eh, I don't want to set this up and do the thing and blah, blah, blah. If you have a permanent setup, you can get rid of that objection and just have something ready to go all the time where you can just turn on some lights and hit record and be ready to go. The other advantage of having a permanent setup is that you don't necessarily need to memorize all the intricate details of your gear because it's already set up and you only ever do it one way. A desktop workflow can be useful if you, uh, for instance, are an app developer and much of what you do is just teach people how to use your apps. A great application for this can be if your customers have seem to ask the same questions over and over and over again about how to do a certain thing. A great application for a video would be to explain how that particular thing works using a screencast. Or for instance, if you are, let's say you're a chess tutor or a chess board maker or something, and you'd like to get some content marketing going where you teach people how to get better at chess, you can set up a chess board next to your computer workstation with a webcam and just kind of show off how to do some cool chess moves, such as the, the five-point checkmate, the five-move <laughs> checkmate. That was amazing. I recommend for this option you get an inexpensive webcam because it offers a little bit more versatility. I'm using one here as part of the live stream, not so much the um, today's presentation, but something like this gives you more versatility. You can move it around. You can... If you want to have it above something, you can do it as well. Here in Christchurch, right next across Fitzgerald Avenue from Photo Warehouse, is this neat little computer store where I bought this webcam and where you can buy this webcam too. It looks like this. 
And if you still want to keep your budget as absolutely minimal as possible, you can use a webcam on your laptop. So uh, as far as software on your desktop, um, if you have a Mac, QuickTime is a surprisingly powerful video production tool. It comes with every Mac ever, and of course, it is free. You can record video from a webcam. You can actually get a screen recording as well. That's a built-in feature. And you can even do some very basic editing, just putting a couple of clips together, which can be more than enough. If you have a Windows machine, um, there's a little camera app. This is a, a Windows 10 at the latest. There's a camera app that you can use to record a webcam. There used to be a nice little app on every copy of Windows called Windows Movie Maker. For reasons unknown to me, that app is now dead, which is unfortunate. But there is another very simple video editing app called Avi Demux, which is available not just for Windows, but for Linux, if you are a Linux user. So, once again, uh, the actual mechanics of editing are a bit beyond what I'm going to go over in this presentation. So, once again, check out my bonus materials afterwards. So, one thing you might be thinking is, if you have a setup that's just your phone or your webcam, is it going to look professional or is it going to look like is how obvious is it going to be that you kind of don't know what you're doing and you're new to this? Should you get, should you actually splurge on a $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 camera? Um, you could, but there is another secret weapon that can make even the cheapest camera look surprisingly professional, and that is lighting. You can spend, you can spend a, damn it, Stupid lag. Mm. You can spend a lot of money on lighting, but you don't have to because there exists this little thing called a photography compact fluorescent lamp. It's a lot like the fluorescent lamp, you know, the compact fluorescents you'd see anywhere, except this one, they're typically brighter and they have a color that's more pure. And what that means is that your skin tones will look nice and natural instead of yellow or weird and flat. Um, here is a place where you can buy it. They ship in New Zealand. And the page, I, um, fixing your video slash dot com slash slash video, I have a link to everything I talk about, including this. 35 bucks each. Um, so, set up one of these light bulbs. You don't want to set up a light bulb just by itself. Um, because then the lighting will be all harsh and nasty looking. So a bit of diffusion can help soften that. My favorite way to do this is a Chinese paper lantern. You can buy them for $2 at your local dollar store. I finally, it was a little bit hard to find here in Christchurch, but I finally found one at Eastgate Mall, a place called Max exclamation mark out. But if you can't find one, or as is unfortunately the, often the case, um, if you go to the dollar store, you might find them in every color but white. You can always just use a table lamp as your diffusion. Put your photo CFL in there. Just make sure that the lampshade is white and not yellow tinted or warm tinted like so many of them are. A good way to to light yourself is to kind of put two of them, two is best, two is best, at about a 90-ish degree angle and, I don't know, a few feet above your head. So that's kind of a very basic technical setup. Um, and I'm just about to get into a bit more content strategy. Should I pause and answer some questions now before we get into that? Does anyone have any questions? Oh, also, if you do have questions, that microphone will be, that way it'll get recorded and live streamed. Everybody good so far? Anyone confused on? OK. Um, anyone thinking about actually doing this for real so far? Sweet. Awesome. OK. So that is how to, that is how to put together a pretty simple but surprisingly professional looking 
video setup. Um, I didn't talk about microphones, so I'm going to add some bonus material about that. That's important, too. So a little bit about, you know, now that you had this set up, what are you supposed to talk about in your videos? Mm -hmm. I think that this is not the best way to think about that. A better way to think about video is what you can, is what you can show. Wait for it. There we go. What you can show. Because video, after all, it's a visual medium. It's about showing things. It's about action. It's about communicating visually and not just a talking head that sits there and blabbers on because that's boring and you run the risk of just losing your audience. So my favorite way to choose video topics is not to just make stuff up, what I think people will be interested in, but to go online and find people who are asking questions along the lines of what you do in your business. So um, for instance, let's say you have and you have a business where you repair espresso machines or you make espresso machine parts or something having to do with espresso. You could hop on over to um, a discussion board where people talk about coffee and making espresso. Um, let's go look at some topics. Okay, steaming milk troubleshooting. Okay. Can't seem to make microfoam. Microfoam is another milk topic. Watery steamed milk. Hmm. Steam technique, that is another issue with milk and having trouble getting the milk consistency right. So you dig a little further and you see that these people are having kind of a hard time making latte art. That is what they want to be able to do, but they can't get the stupid milk at the right consistency. So you happen to be an expert on making espresso latte art. For the record, I do not consider myself an expert, but let's say hypothetically that you are the coffee guru so you know that, well, it seems as though these people, the problem they're having is that they, they don't know how to get, they don't know the right height that the steaming wand should be in the milk. So what can I do? What sort of video can I make where I could show the right way to do this? And here is an example video I made on my iPhone. I, saw, I snuck in here in Windows, nice and quiet. And I made this in about 15 minutes, just on my phone. I think it's going to play. Hey there. If you've ever tried to make a latte before, you've probably had a hard time getting the milk to the point where it could actually make any sort of pattern in the coffee. Uh, not enough air, and you can't do much at all too much air and it's just a big frothy foamy disgusting mess kind of like this so in this video you're going to get a chance to see and hear what it sounds like to get the amount of air in your milk exactly right first up let's see what happens when we put the wand too high above the milk be sure to listen carefully So as you can see, way too much milk in the cup. Gonna wipe this off. Full of bubbles. And when we pour it into the drink, it's gonna be just a big old bubbly mess. And there's basically no way we could art with that. Now let's see and listen to what it sounds like and what it looks like to hold the wand too low in the milk. As you can see, there's a whole lot of squealing. Uh, the, mil the milk is not sticking to the side of the cup very well. And when we try to do some art, it uh, doesn't really want to give you a pattern, as you can see. And finally, let's watch and listen to see what it sounds like when you get the milk while I want it at exactly the right height. So as you can probably hear, there was a little bit of air. You could hear sort of a pss sound every once in a while. 
but not constantly. That's just about what you want. Uh, the milk is kind of sticking to the side of the cup. So let's see what, what happens when you try to do some art. So as you can see, good consistency, obviously not the best design, but the milk is the right consistency to actually be able to do this in the first place. Take a look at how much better it is than the one with way too much air and with not enough air. So there you go. So that is an example of a video. Wouldn't you love to see that on YouTube if you're trying to? And it's just a matter of finding people who, is this mic working? Yes, okay, cool. Just a matter of finding the questions that people are asking and then showing them the right way to do things. Not the only way to do it, but I'll get into other options shortly. So, places you can find these questions include, of course, discussion forums, Facebook groups, and um, those customer support emails, the ones you get over and over again that your customers just can't seem to figure out. That can be a great time to make a video that explains it to everybody. That'll hopefully cut back on that customer support time. Um, this is based on a thing I learned from some very smart people. Uh, it is called Sales Safari. Um, you can actually use this to build entire products. Um, but you can also use it to make content for um, video and other media as well. So in the show notes that I mentioned, you can learn all about this in a sweet video. Um, if you're not sure whether to go with a certain topic or not, a good question to ask yourself is, would somebody pay me to solve a problem kind of like this? So if you, you know, are an audiovisual installer, would somebody come in and say, hey, can you come in and show us how to use this touch panel you installed? Or you can just make a video. That should be how to do it. So yes, in that case, people certainly would pay you to solve the problem. Once you finish your video, video. Upload it all over the place. Put it on Facebook and YouTube. Send it out to your email newsletter. And just good marketing, you know, best practice. Always include a call to action. Find a way for people to be able to watch more of the content you create. And if you'd like to learn more about how to make good coffee, be sure to sign up for my newsletter at the end of this video. Be sure to like us on Facebook. Be sure to retweet this post. Be sure to do something so that I can keep sending you awesome content that helps you out so that one day you'll become a customer. That's the idea. Or in the case of customer support videos, staying a customer. One great way to not get out of the habit of making video once you start is to create an editorial calendar. Set aside some time to just go through those um, go through some forums or your customer support emails and make a big list of questions you could answer with video and write it all down. Okay, on Friday the 11th of March, I'm gonna do this topic, and then on the 18th, I'm gonna do this. So maybe you tried doing this and you found, well, I, I was really awkward on camera, and this is really boring. One way to remedy this is to keep your videos short and simple. It is very easy to overcomplicate things using video, but if it's nice and short and follows a simple formula, um, you'll, have, you'll have a much better time with that. For instance, the video I made about espresso was really only three parts. There was an opening stand-up, some action sequences, and then the closing stand-up. It does not need to be any more complicated than that. Um, the opening stand-up was about 30 seconds long. It spent about a minute or two, or even less, on the action. And once again, just to wrap things up and tell people to sign up for your stuff or follow you on Facebook, another 30 seconds is fine. It can be very tempting once you start learning the more advanced features of your editing software to start editing, adding effects and crazy titles. But once again, that's not necessary. I just put a piece of paper on next to the coffee machine, and that was fine. Maybe not the most preferred. So if you do think it's worth your time to add in some nicer looking text, then go for it. But don't get totally caught up in all the fancy stuff, because that's a great way to be like, now I have to do this for every video, and that'll just take forever. If you're having a hard time thinking about how you can show things with video, here are some, here are some 
brainstorm prompts, so to speak. Here are some other ways to show it if you can't come up with a way to just show somebody how to do something on camera. For instance, as I mentioned earlier, screencasts are a great way to go, especially if you are an app developer. Um, show people how to do things on a computer. You may have seen this one before. This is, this is, let me try this. There we go, okay. Getting a little laggy. The whiteboard explainer, and the whiteboard is in quotes because I did this on paper. It doesn't need to be a whiteboard. You simply set up a camera above a piece of paper, and you draw something. And then you speed it up in your editing software. Um, I made this video right here. Actually, it was a, uh, oh, I threw it one away. But I made them right here using this setup, and I can show you how to do it after this if you'd like to learn how to do that. And I'm also going to make a video as part of the bonus material. This is useful for breaking down complex concepts into its component parts. Um, for instance, hmm, how do cameras work? You could say you could you could stand in front of the camera and say, well, there you, you have a subject, and then the light goes into the lens, and then it sort of bends this way and goes under the sensor. Or you can just draw a picture that shows how those things work. Another useful uh, application for the whiteboard explainer is, I don't know, visual metaphor. Um, describing a process in sequence. Another common way to make video is to just make a PowerPoint or a keynote presentation. And as you're going through it, recording as a screencast, you just record a voiceover. And the lag is terrible. All right. For instance, here's one I made. Event live streaming. Where do you even begin? Are you supposed to use your phone? Is there a way to get your camera into your computer and stream from your computer? What are you going to do about audio? How are you going to be able to hear anybody? And what software are you supposed to buy and install and use? Oh, and by the way, you have about two weeks to get all this together because, you know, it's not like somebody would tell you about this three months in advance. That would be nice. So. This is a really simple way to add some visual action and to make it visually engaging in ways other than, you know, showing things on camera. You can even get a little advanced and put a webcam in the lower left corner or one of the corners if you want to, sh you know, have that human connection. This is for advanced applications only. Uh, fancy animation. If you, uh, I do not recommend doing this kind of thing if you're just getting started because it will take forever and you'll get discouraged. But if you already have skills in Photoshop or Illustrator or maybe even After Effects, and you, you can absolutely apply those to making video. Um, but once again, this is advanced only. Don't, I would not recommend doing this unless you already have graphic design experience. Here's one I made. How about your customers who use the rods to make batteries? Well, you happen to know that your unique manufacturing process is extremely resistant to corrosion. Once again, this allows your customers to make batteries that are less likely to fail prematurely, which means that their customers won't be left in the dark. So yeah, cool graphic. Um, and the, one more way is if you want to just have a discussion about something, but you don't want to be on camera yourself, if you're worried about looking awkward or sounding awkward, a great way to remedy that is to get a friend involved. Prefer preferably somebody who's also, you know, part of your business, so you're representing your business. Somebody, you know, somebody who is charismatic and can carry on a good conversation with you. With you. Have that, you know, interplay between two people. That can just be, I don't know, that can be super compelling for people watching. And finally, um, one last way that I'm going to show you to visualize concepts to help make your videos nice and visually engaging so that, once again, your audience will watch all the way to the end, is to start by, um, just talking about something, think about what you're going to say, and then use video to create examples of that. And you can... And here, I'll, I'll show you how this works. So you can start with something like this. Building a community from scratch can be hard, but it's a lot easier by keeping a few key concepts in mind. First, be sure to engage your community members. So that's the first part of your script. That, ma that part makes sense to speak directly to the camera, but you don't just want to keep talking. So this next part of the script, 
um, give them challenges to work on. Well, what's an example of that? Well, if it'll play. Hmm. Here in this community, we have a big puzzle um, right here on the table. That is an example of a challenge you can work on. An example of spontaneous fun activities would be, well, there's a chessboard over by the lunch table that people can just hop on and start playing with one another. How can people meet each other? Well, one way is um, the daily quiz. That's a great way for people here to meet one another. And finally, hmm, how can people here know that they're part of a greater whole? Well, we could get a clip of the board on the side that shows everyone's face and name and company. Excuse me. Each one of those is just a visual example of the thing you wanted to talk about. Now, maybe you've gone through all those things and you still just can't decide how to show a given concept. Maybe it's just too abstract. Maybe you think about it and it should, just doesn't put any pictures in your head about how you could show this visually. In that case, that is a great way to know that it's time for that particular topic to be a blog post. So, having gone over all that, what can you do next? What are your next steps, should you choose to get into this, to making video? Grab some gear. Hop on over to, if you want to go with the mobile workflow, hop on over to Photo Warehouse. Grab one of these guys and, you know, the cheapest tripod you can find. Uh, go on to a discussion board or a Facebook community or your own customer support emails. Do some research. Find the questions people are actually asking. Do that a couple of times, or a bunch of times, really. Um, make a big list of topics you can do. Set aside some time. Make that first video. Show that video to your whole audience and all your customers, everybody, your friends and family. And also, you should totally send me what you make because I want to see it. And then keep doing that forever and ever. <laughs> so once again, all the bonus materials are going to be here. That I'm going to uh, post some more in-depth tutorials on how to produce an edit on your phone, how to produce on your desktop, on a Mac, on Windows. Um, I'm going to do a thing about how to do a little more detail about how to do these um, whiteboard explainers and links to everything I talked about, all the products, all the pages. So, any questions? Would you recommend having a script? That is an excellent question. Um, it kind of depends. It had, there are sort of upsides and downsides to it. Um, an extemporaneous style can come across as a bit more natural, but it can also come across as a bit more awkward. If you write a script, you can get your message exactly right, um, but it can also come across as kind of stiff and rehearsed. I am reading a thing. You should come to this website.com and do the thing. So that's the downside. Um, one way to kind of not to kind of get the best of both worlds is to write a script and then memorize it in tiny little chunks um, and try to you know bring as much humanity as it, into it as possible and just just that one little bit and get that one little bit exactly right and um, intersperse that with B-roll so it's not just you staring at the camera the whole time because that can get awkward. And then you don't have to worry about memorizing the entire script. So does that kind of answer the question? OK. When it comes to that whiteboard in uh, mm -hmm. could you do that at purpose? Or is, it, is that something that you need a bit of time to actually set up and draw the script and pull around sections? Or do you just kind of do it all as one piece? Should you do the whiteboard as individual sections or all in one piece? I would recommend doing it in multiple pages, just because otherwise it'll be a lot of stuff on one page, depending on how complex your topic is. Um, so yeah, like, don't cr try to cram too much on there. You know, you always have the option of just ripping out the old page and the page and doing another. You kind of take your concept and divide it into logical chunks and just think about, you know, what you want each page to be. You could even go so far as to make a script where you have your 
dialogue on one side, and then just a little sketch of what you ultimately want to draw, like a storyboard. So yes, I would recommend splitting it up. And this is really short. If it's 30 seconds, then that's great, because that's a great way to you know, engage your audience without killing yourself making a ton of content. A 30 second video can be very valuable, for sure. Anybody else? Cool. Well, have, for, um, have fun. Go forth. Make video. Be awesome. And I really want to see what you guys make. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to be here until the end of April. So. That was awesome. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Also, for those who are watching at the other BizDojo locations, you should send me an email at nick, nick at fixingyourvideo.com. I will answer your questions. Thank you. And I hope it actually successfully streamed and recorded. I think it did. Cool.